House of the Dragon Season 2 is finally here, after two years of waiting. In this deep dive, I will tackle all of the lore, all of the important storylines, and also give the book and show perspective on the matters we see on screen. Full warning, this is a deep dive, so it will contain spoilers. If you enjoy this kind of speculative historical slash lore content, then do subscribe. The new intro has what is basically the lineage of the Targaryens woven into an embroidered cloth, depicting their family history from the Doom of Valyria all the way to present-day Targaryen lineage. I personally think it's a really cool choice, but the person I was watching with said it kind of looked a bit too 3D generated for them, which is fair. In Season 1, Queen Regent Alicent interprets, shall we say, Viserys claiming that she wanted Aegon to sit on the throne instead of his officially named heir in Rhaenyra. This leads to Alicent coronating Aegon in the Dragon Pit in front of all the townsfolk of King's Landing for them to witness. In the books, Aegon questions his mother Alicent whether any of this was true. Why, after 20 years of King Viserys refusing to name Aegon as next in line, would he change his mind so swiftly? And no less, to a daughter whom he loved. Rhaenyra is infuriated, and sends her sons, Jocerus and Lucerus Velaryon, who are really bastards, sired by Sir Harwin Strong, to win over the houses of the Seven Kingdoms in protest against this alleged folly. Prince Aemon, however, brother to newly crowned Prince Aegon, and rider of the oldest and greatest dragon alive in Vagar, finds Lucerus travelling near Storm's End to win over House Baratheon to the side of his mother. Although, all he finds is an already scheming Aemon, trying to do the same. Vagar's size is no match for either prince, and as Aemon struggles to control his dragon Vagar, Vagar eats Lucerus and his diminutive adolescent dragon Arax almost whole. At the premiere of Season 2, the episode is mostly about the difficulties of being a mother to a king, and no less an immature and unskilled one. Aegon in this episode seems to have the best intentions in mind in his decision-making. A man comes who has lost a significant portion of his sheep flock and asks for reimbursement. Aegon is very quick and generous to give it, likely why his guards introduced him as Aegon the Magnanimous. But his hand, Lord Otto Hightower, reminds the king that there was a reason these sheep were taken, to keep his dragons fed. Without them, they would not survive a war. We quickly realize that although Aegon has a seemingly benevolent heart, he has much to learn in actual governance and leadership. For all of Aemon's sadistic flaws and serial killer glare, unlike his brothers, Aemon is a learned man, an analyzer, a tactician, for good or evil. He understands what must be done in times of war and conflict, and his vision is greater than that of his brother, pun fully intended. Rhaenyra is mourning the death of her son. She knows it to be true in her heart, although she has not seen it. But now she finds the wing of her late son dragon Arax awashed on the beach, confirming her feelings exactly. In reaction, Rhaenyra calls for Daemon Targaryen, her husband slash uncle, to take the head of Aemon Targaryen. Daemon, via the mistress of whispers, Missaria, then hires two men, only known to history as blood and cheese, to go into the Red Keep and take the head. They move into the Red Keep, cheese having an extensive knowledge of Magor's old tunnels. And here I would like to give two perspectives one of the book and one of the show. I do this for you all to notice the impact that the books have compared to the show. Blood and Cheese find the sister queen to Aegon, Helena, just arriving with her three children. They slice open the guard's throat and proceed into the room. Blood warned Helena that if she screamed, her and all her children would die. And Helena remained calm. They said that they were merely debt collecting, an eye for an eye, a son for a son, but assured Helena that only one would die. Blood then took two of the boys in his hands and asked the queen which one she wanted to kill. The queen pleaded to please kill her instead, but they reminded her that they were there for only a son. Helena struggles. Imagine choosing between your children which one should die a gruesome death, and not only this, 
but the princes in waiting, the king's children. She says that if she does not choose soon, then he will rape her only daughter, Chehera, out of boredom. When she was once again forced to make an impossible choice under the threat that all of her children will be killed, the queen tearfully chose Melor. Melor was the youngest, and Helena believed that he was too young to fully understand what was going on, and was also not the firstborn son of the king. Cheese whispered into the boy's ear, You hear that, little boy? Your mama wants you dead. He then smiles towards the hulking blood, and blood proceeds to kill Jaehaerys, the firstborn, and not Melor, decapitating him with one fell swoop. Helena screams in horror. Blood and Cheese enter through a causeway to find Helena already in the room. Cheese holds a knife to her throat. Melor does not exist in the show, and Helena only has two children, a boy Jaehaerys and a girl Jaehaera. There is no choice given. Blood and Cheese debate over which is the boy and which is the girl, asking for him to find a cock and be done with it. They brutally murder the boy in his crib off-screen. You hear the sounds of the knife as it cuts off the head of the boy. As this is happening, Helena takes her daughter in her arms and runs to the room of her mother, where she finds Alicent and Kristen Cole having sex. She hides behind a wall and begins to cry in horror and fear, as Alicent asks what's going on. What made the blood and cheese scene so harrowing and frightful was really the fact that a mother had to choose between which son to kill and which to spare. That was what made this scene so famous in the books. In the show, I believe they failed to capture the true essence of this scene by omitting one of Helena's children entirely, and basically relieving her of the choice. Also, the small choices of not having any of the children awake, having them too young and inside their cribs, gives the scene an entirely more palatable tone, and one which is not as visceral as the one in the books. In all honesty, I was rooting for Blood and Cheese to fail in their mission to kill Aemond. Aemond might be the cold man that he is, but he creates chaos and plays the game very well. Damon probably might not be too happy that they killed the wrong boy, but it's still a pretty intense blow to the Greens, nonetheless. Overall, however, I will say that the premiere was brilliant and I can't wait for more. I think we're going to see a lot of Rhaenyra's wrath in the coming episodes, and probably see more about the Civil War in the Riverlands, which is the geographical key to the rest of Westeros. Ultimately, House of the Dragon Season 2 is off to a great start, with a few hiccups, in my opinion. But in general, a great first episode. If you enjoy seeing more of these in-depth perspectives, then give the channel a subscribe and like the video. See you in the next one.